As more mass shootings grow into a daily occurrence in the U.S., it seems we can't turn to lawmakers for solutions. But can we turn to science? Hey guys, Julia here for D News. Science can tell us a lot about the world around us, the universe beyond, even what's going on in the cells in our fingertips. But it can't tell us a whole lot about gun violence. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, and the National Institute of Health, NIH, have been banned from getting any kind of federal funding for firearm-related studies for the last 20 years. In 1996, former Republican Congressman Jay Dickey of Arkansas pushed for an amendment on a funding bill that forbid the use of federal funds on studies that promote gun control, a move he's come to later regret. He even told NPR that he wants science and science investigation and examination to take the place of politics. He originally meant for the bill to stop the collection of data to go to gun control advocacy, but the vague language put the brakes on any further research. Scientists just became too scared that they would lose their funding if they studied gun violence, and rightfully so. Congress retroactively punished the CDC for carrying out gun research the previous year. In 1995, the CDC spent around $2.6 million on gun violence research. At first, some members of Congress wanted to strip all the funding for the entire CDC's Injury Control Center, a total of over $40 million. But they compromised for taking just the same amount that had been spent on gun violence the previous year, $2.6 million. With such large sums at risk, scientists were scared to study it, and sponsors were spooked to fund stuff that had to do with guns, according to one researcher from Duke University. So it's no wonder we know so little. I mean, over the past four decades, the NIH has funded just three studies on gun violence. Check out a comparison of NIH studies. They have studied diseases like rabies, cholera, and polio. Take rabies, for example. It killed just 63 people globally from the years 1973 to 2012. The NIH completed 89 studies on it. In comparison, over the same time period, gun violence killed over 4 million people. Yet the NIH completed just three studies on the subject. You might be saying, but guns aren't diseases. But the fact is, research organizations like the CDC and the NIH study other things potentially harmful to human health besides diseases, like deaths by drowning or car accidents. And even if they study these things, they aren't suggesting we ban pools or cars. They are just interested in making them safer. And in 2013, President Obama agreed. After the wake of the horrific Newtown Elementary School shooting, he gave an executive order that the CDC and the NIH return to studying gun violence. But unfortunately, not much has changed. Congress still blocks funding on firearms when they can, and researchers are still left quaking in their sensible shoes. CDC spokeswoman Courtney Lennard told the Washington Post that it is possible for us to conduct firearm-related research, but our resources are very limited. So what do researchers know about gun violence? Well, according to the CDC, we know that around 33,600 people die every year from firearms across all categories in the U.S. That's about the same number of people that die from car accidents. And from a few studies available, like one study published in the New England Journal of Medicine, found that having a gun in the home is linked with an increase increase in the risk of homicide in the home. Other risk factors include substance abuse and a history of violence. And another study from the Journal of Epidemiology found that having a gun in the home increases the risk of suicide for adult men. But there are so many basic questions we have yet to answer. For starters, no one knows how many guns are out there in the U.S. There's no national registry. We don't know why people want to own a gun, or even what percentage of gun owners go on to commit a crime with their firearm basic things that science needs to answer. Like Richard Burke, a criminology professor at the University of Pennsylvania said in a letter to Joe Biden, I see no upside to ignorance. So I guess more research is needed. I know, I know, you're probably sick of hearing about gun violence and mass shootings, but these events are just as horrific even the 300th time around. So why have we stopped caring about mass shootings? Have we become desensitized? Trace has the answer in this video right here. According to Pew Research Center's Project for Excellence in Journalism, 29% of local news stories in 2005 were about crime. By 2012, it had dropped to 17%. Why? Perhaps because people are habituating. I'm sure you're already commenting, but don't forget to leave your thoughts down below. Hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back to D News. We've got new episodes every day of the week.